This is the first of two videos about recurrence relations. At a sequence which involves a linear recurrence relation. That means that the connection between one term in the sequence and the next is connected by a linear formula. That is multiplying by something and either adding or subtracting by something. Okay, remember a sequence is just a list of numbers with some sort of connection. And a term just means a member of that. So, for example, if we looked at this, this would be uh, the first term. Now, quite often, which is a little bit confusing, we call that U0. Remember, we use a capital letter to show that it's a sequence, and this refers to the member in it but the first term we tend to call u naught. Yeah, so that would be the second one. u1, u2, u3, and so on, u4, that one would be. You know, and if you wanted a general term for that, we would use un, where that little n is its position in the list. Now, sometimes we don't use the letter U, we might use another letter, for example, you could have called it T, so T0, T1, T2, and so on. Generally, if there's more than one sequence involved, they will use a different capital letter for it. Okay, now we said linear. What do we mean by that? We mean the connection for a linear recurrence relation between one term and the next is multiplied by something, and in this case, add something on. If you look at all these, these are all times two plus three, aren't they? And then if you look at that, two times seven plus three will give me 17, and so on. Two times 17 plus three, 37. So in this case, it's multiplied by two and add on three. Now, if you look at these, you can see that to get from U0 to U1, so U1 is just two times U0 plus three. To get to U2, that's two times U1 plus three, and so on, okay? UN and then the next term would be u n plus one. You know, so if that was 10, 10 plus one is 11 and so on. Now to connect these two together using this, you'd say that the next term is equal to two times the term we have, which in this case was u n, the term before it, plus three, okay? Alternatively, you could think of the term before that one. So you could say un is two times the term before, which is un minus one. So if that was u10, the term before would be u9. Yeah, so u10 would be two times u9 plus three. Okay, so that's what we call a linear recurrence relation. Now, in general, we would write u n plus 1 equals a u n plus b. But, you know, where a and b are just numbers. But we can also write them as u n equals a u n minus 1 plus b. That is, you know, the term we've got is a times the term before plus b. You know, these are sort of interchangeable almost. Okay, let's have a look at an example. For the recurrence relation, un plus 1 equals 0.5 un plus 2, where u0 is 8, find a u3 and b, the smallest value for which un is less than 4.2. Well, if we start off, if we're looking at a, remember, u0 is 8. But u1 is going to be 0.5 times 
times u0, which is 8, plus 2. And if we work that out, it gives us 6. So we've got that u1 is 6. And we just repeat the process, putting in 6 next time. So u2 will be 0 0.5 times 6 plus 2, which gives you 5. And then lastly, we wanted u3, so that's 0 0.5 times 5 plus 2, gives me 4.5. Okay, so we just, it's an iterative process, we put the answer from there back into the equation again to get the next term, and then the answer from that back into this equation to get the next term, and so on for as long as we need to. Now for B, we're just gonna have to continue this process. Remember, we want this to be less than 4.2. So, all we're gonna do is we're gonna look at U4 next. Now that's 0 0.5 times 4.5 plus two. If we work that out, that is 4.25. Still too big. So we want the next one, and that gives us 0 0.5 times 4.25 plus 2. And if we work that out, it'll give you 4.125. Now that is smaller than 4.2, isn't it? Therefore, we can say the value of n that we want is 5. Now, if you want some practice questions in the Hodder-Gibson, which are similar to this, remember it's Hodder-Gibson, page 21, exercise 2.2. Okay, let's have a look at an example set in context. Here it says, a patient is injected with 160 milliliters of a drug. Every six hours, 25% of the drug leaves her bloodstream and she's injected with a further 20 milliliters. The first thing is asking us to find a recurrence relationship to show the amount of drug in her bloodstream at any given time. Well, for A, we know 25% leaves. Therefore, there must be 75% left. Okay, so we now know that our multiplier, yeah, remember a recurrence relationship is of the form, we now know our multiplier, which is the A, will be 0 0.75, which is just 75% as a decimal, because 25% leaves, so 75% left, which is 0 0.75. Now, B is what we're adding in every time, but look, we're adding in 20 milliliters, aren't we? So we can just say B is equal to 20. Okay, so our recurrence relation is UN plus one equals 0.75 UN plus 20. And that's A done. That's our recurrence relationship for this. Now, uh, the next bit is they wanted to know how much was left after 24 hours. Well, we know we start off with 160. That's because that is what they injected her with at the start. Now, to work out what there was after six hours, so after six hours, yes, we're going to have U1 would be equal to 160, times 0 0.75 plus 20. If I work that out, it gives me 140 milliliters, okay? So after 12 hours, yeah, that's the next time we go through this iteration, this formula, we're gonna have 140 times 0.75 plus 20 and if I work that out 
it gives me 125 milliliters. So nearly there, after 18 hours, that's gonna be U3. Okay, uh, we've got 0.125 uh, well, times 0.75 plus 20, which gives me 113.75. Lastly, after 24 hours, U4 is going to be 113.75 times 0 0.75 plus 20, which gives me, if you round it, 105.31 milliliters. Make sure you got the units in as well. So that's what's left after 24 hours. Okay, let's look at our second example. If UN plus 1 equals AUN plus B and U1 is 4, U2 is 8 and U3 is 10, find A and B. This is really another simultaneous equations question. Because if you remember, U2 equals A U1 plus B, and U3 equals A U2 plus B. Yeah? So, putting in our numbers, we've got 8 equals 4A plus B. Let's call that equation 1. And we've got 10 equals um, 8 a plus b we'll call that equation 2 that's just plugging in what u1 u2 and u3 are so simultaneous equations first step i'm going to do equation 2 minus equation 1 and we get 2 equals 4 a so from that you can see that a equals 0 0.5 Okay, then we can take either equation. I'll just use the first one again. Let's plug in what A is. So you've got 8 equals 4 times a half plus B. So B will be 4 times a half is 2. Take it away from 8. You've got 6. So we've got A is 0.5. B is 6. That's all we are asked for in this question. Now, if you want to practice these and the one set before in context, it's Hodder Gibson, page 23, exercise 2.3. Okay, so 